That five year wait from 10 to tw uh, from 10 to 12 really killed Final Fantasy forever. I would argue the oversaturation of the expanded universe of seven really also helped, like put a damper on it. No, that didn't help, but <clears throat> no, that expanded before it burst. Yeah, uh, <laughs> more so with like Dirge's service because I don't think anyone really will play that game. Like obviously people did play it, but like not nearly as many. No. Like, even Crisis Core, not as many people love that game. Which, bullshit, because... Oh god. It's the best part. It is the... Crisis Core is literally the best part of Final Fantasy VII. The remake is, has been pretty good, though. I will admit from what I've seen. We're in the new year now, and neither of us has still yet to play the Seven remake, even though I've owned it for, like, six months. I'm... Okay, so... I'm gonna play it at work one of these days next time I bring my PS4. I just haven't done it yet, because I've been letting Taylor play Skyrim. On the PS4, <laughs> I've been busy with this. <laughs> anyway, so uh, speak. I, I guess our the um, things we do for love. I guess that our master's thesis of Hasten uh, Japan versus America being put on the temporary back burner. Uh, th some things are going on. We're cutting all over the place. So a, a bunch of stuff just happening. Here's Lacus. I am still not certain what to make of her. Stupid. High as a kite, that's definitely what way yes. to put it. Idealist. Doesn't think things through. Ever. No. But she gets her way, so I guess something's working out for her. <laughs> so we're making a hard cut after that first battle until they get to Earth, and that's like 20 episodes in. Yeah, it really was. So we're skipping everything that happens in space, including things like when Flay's father died. When Flay started manipulating Kira, I think honestly the fact that Kira starts getting manipulated at all, yeah, Flay just kind of disappears for like eighty percent of this story mode. She really, real Flay like, because she's with them for a, to a point when they're on Earth, but she doesn't do anything when they're on Earth. Literally after they touch down that desert and Alaska happens, Flay pisses off and doesn't come up again until like the like until she's pretty much gonna die. That's funny. That's... Okay, I need to explain something to everyone. Flay, at her, like, when she was manipulating uh, Kira, might have actually been the best part of Seed Vanilla. That might sound incredibly weird, but she had the most sense of agency of any woman I've seen in a lot of Gundams, period. She did terrible things, but I don't begrudge her for doing the things she did. It's self-preservation. I don't blame her for it. But yeah, that's a complicated basket and a half if I've ever seen it, as well as the obvious introduction of the flagrant racism against coordinators. <laughs> because we needed more of that. She was already racist and fucked, but she have to remember- Oh no, this is when her dad does die! They're okay, I guess they're covering it in the cutscene then. Her father dies right in front of her, and she's completely powerless to stop it. And this is what really sends her over the edge, holy crap. It's the sort of thing with Shin, which I understand exactly why he does things. He does the wrong things, but he's well within his right to do those things. Yeah, like, it's not unreasonable in the slightest, but a little unreal, like, jumping the gun very hard for, you know, what what happens. Are we still here? We're, this is the whole uh, hostage exchange, quote-unquote, with uh, Lacus. And Lacus. Thank you, new dub. Oh, God. I, I don't think I'll be able to watch the new dub now. Because that would be painful. You're kind of going to have to. It's gonna. It's the only easily and readily available format for you that you don't have to download. You are unfortunately right. Because do you really want to waste 10 to 30 gigabytes of space on Mobile Suit Gundam Seed Original? You're not wrong. Even if you have the space to spare, do you want to? That, yeah, do I want to waste all that bandwidth to download all at once? See, now we're asking the real fucking questions. Yeah, that's a better. That's be, yeah. Plus, I'm paying for. Plus, I'm paying for that Funimation app, and now the and now that uh, the first season of the newest Love Live series is over, someone has to make use of it. I mean, I'll be watching more One Piece pretty soon, regardless. <laughs> okay, so in a quick departure, because this thing is not at all in Gundam Three or prior Gundam games as a, a regularly playable thing, I'm going to use it. <laughs> 
Go nuts. If you've been here for a really long time, once upon a time, I did actually make a little guide for using the endless <laughs> waltz in Gunner Reborn. That was like five. five years ago? Five. That was a long time ago, Jesus Christ. Because you haven't done anything like that for any sort of Muso type game since Part Warriors 3 released. Yeah, I did that. I did like a thing for Shanks, I did a thing for Law, and that was literally it. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> So, this whole manipulation thing with Flay makes things interesting because she fucks Kira. Yes. And not in like an applied sort of way. You see it. Shadows, granted, and you don't see Titty, but you definitely see them going at well, it I don't know. in neither a good old was, missionary position. Well, I don't know. Neither of us have seen the remaster. We don't know how far they, how far they go. That's true. They, I, I think it's, been, it's definitely been mentioned they've done it plenty of times. They did it at least three or four times. Yeah. Oh, and in the part in the parts we're not seeing here, uh, Flay's uh, fiance finds out about this. Yeah, gets real pissed at Kira. Then Kira's like, "What are you gonna do about it?" and and almost literally breaks his arm. Oh wow. Okay. I feel bad for that guy. Holy shit. Yeah. Yeah. And he and the, and he gets treated like the bad guy for finding out that his fiance is cheating on him. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of convinced that whole fiance thing was probably more an arranged marriage. It was because Flay very much seems like a pro kind of person who is more into strong men with willpower behind them versus yes, what her original hut. That still kind of sucks though. But then again, we already had one other uh, <laughs> set up marriage between Astrid and Lacus going into the series. And uh, <sighs> rebellion, Coggly. This is great. <sighs> I do like Hoggly, but man, is her sense of character all over the fucking place. Also, she's literally uh, Kira, but with uh, blonde hair. I mean, I'm brother. <laughs> I mean, I mean, literally. I mean. Tell me that this fucking series is not facelift directly from Mel Solid. Crabs. Crabs. This was cute. This was very cute. I got the recessive traits, brother. <laughs> god. Oh my god. You know, with the whole thing about brunette and brown, uh, sorry, brunette and blonde, and then thinking about Mulaf Laga and his complicated, sordid history. Oh my god, it literally is just. <laughs> it literally is just, just uh, Metal Gear Solid. See, that's the thing, though. Mulaf Laga isn't a clone. He actually is. Uh, his father's biological son. It's just that he was really disappointed in how pathetic Mulaflaga was. So he's like, "You're uh, you're pathetic. I disown you. I want I want a perfect child. Yeah. So I'm going to use the coordinator project and uh, create a clone of myself to be my own perfect child." The way I, the way it was worded, it sounded like it was more like a Boba Fett, Jango Fett kind of thing, where <laughs> it was a clone, but it was like raised normally, or like not with accelerated aging at all. Like obviously, Rao Luke Crescent is definitely a clone. Yes. And then there's Ray, who is Solidus, also a clone. Oh god, we're Ray, too, we're going down the rabbit hole again. Ray is only a few years old. Yes, he is Solidus. He's a few years old. He was already degradating by the time that Destiny was happening. Yeah, he wasn't long for this world. No, not really. <sighs> anyway, 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 this bitch is here, and I don't like her in any dub. Anyway, so, yeah, the dub for Cagler all over the place. Did you ever watch that comparison clip I sent you? Yes, I did. <laughs> of the new one? Uh, <laughs> ketchup. Uh, no, that wasn't it. It was, it was definitely the, um... Chili and yogurt. Yep. That's... I had to watch it because Desert Tiger is inadvertently one of my favorite characters, even if he does jackpoint shit in fucking Destiny. I don't know, maybe I just like the Rambo Rall characters, who knows, because they're actually cool characters with their moral gray area. He also has the sexy wife that dies. Yeah, that's sad. And he did. And he lived. <laughs> so, I'm gonna be... If you wanted to draw more parallels with 79... Look at all these candy-colored freaks. Face battle they have during re-entry. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah. Um, that happens literally every single time. That is not unique to 79. No, happens. it's not. Every single gun them has that. Yes. And I'm not I'm not saying that's a good thing either. I'm just saying that hey, when it's you, finally your turn. I'm just saying that yeah, yeah, right? That was all that was all one cutscene. 
Holy shit! Wow, okay, we were- You can set a partner, I think. Can I? Battle prep. That would be nice. Hopefully, yeah, okay. Oh, sick. Uh, b -b 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 you know what, be, f be funny and thematic. Make it Natalie. E oh my god, I can set them. <gasps> or Flay. No, make it Azrael. He's funny. Yes. But he, he does the same thing because Wait, he's the, in the debate. How many outfits does she have? Just the one, damn. Okay. All right, I'll have the little shithead. I like him. He's he's very much like Angelo kind of funny, where he's very much <laughs> fucking dumb, but he's hilarious in the, in the wrong sort of way. Yes. <laughs> oh, Wing Zero. More at least uh, Endless Vault's Wing Zero. So this thing, it, uh, it's only, it was only made DLC for this game. Uh... You still didn't have include the wing. any of the movie crap. It, you you only get uh, the original Wing Zero and um, like on three going backwards. This thing, however, is pretty much like screen clearing R Us. You're probably gonna see me destroy this level in no time. I'm not gonna lie. Yes. The only thing is remote lacking is kind of like a solo t target damage, but that's it. This is level one, and the level one just kind of shreds everything beneath you. So that's a thing. Oh, your solo targeting is your level two. Uh, it's, it's a tackle. Was it? Yeah, I feel like that was a, that was a, that was the aerial bomb. I can check it out in a minute though. Hang on. Let's see here. Oh, that's I was doing that here. Okay. <laughs> I meant to do a level two, but I was accidentally in the air a little bit. Uh, that's something we should prob I should probably mention a lot sooner. When you dash out of combos, you're automatically pointed to an aerial state. Yeah. Like, regar uh, like regardless of what you do, and it's kind of rough. Yeah, I'm not a fan. Of dash slash aerial combos. Yeah, Power Warriors one through three, pretty much all of them. Like whenever you dash cancel, you are automatically put on. You're still on the ground. Yes. So there's like no aerial variations whatsoever. Meanwhile, because, this game because there were because there was no jumping in those games. Yeah, yeah give it a try now. You're level two. Yeah. Oh, it is this move. Okay. Yep. Poof. That that's your solo targeting. Yeah. Bye, Isaac. <laughs> He's actually fucking great. He's also got a really hot mom. It's so weird. <laughs> Why does everyone in the show have really hot moms? <laughs> Gundam Seed knew what it was about. <laughs> Gundam Seed 400% knew what it was doing. And that's so weird because it didn't really know what it was trying to do half the time. I guess I'll mention Gundam's, this here. I'll give this. I'll give it credit more than anything else. Gundam Seed was definitely experimental. Yeah. And, and I don't mean in the hyuk hyuk uh, child experiment way. Uh, they definitely knew that they that they were pa uh, paint, uh, painting a lot of broad fetishes. You got MILF, you got teenagers fucking each other, you got some people that aren't teenagers fucking people that are the teenagers. You have NTR. You have NTR. <laughs> mind control. My, uh, mind control. Oh boy, we can keep going. We, we really can, maybe in a moment. We got, you got good old vanilla as well. You have potential- you have harem. Harem, you have- Thank you, you Athrun. Have, you have a lot of implied yaoi. Yes. On multiple fronts. Ver very much so. Incest. Uh, self cest self cest and incest. Yeah. This show is kind of fucking wild, guys. <laughs> like, on the one hand, it's simultaneously, like, it's... Torture porn. Yeah. Yeah, in a manner of speaking, you could definitely say that. <laughs> Gore. Lots of guro. Guro, yeah. I was, I was about to say that. <laughs> This show is fucked sometimes. Cheers. Because this is literally the most violent that I believe they ever get. See, I think you could definitely get more violent with, like, the Titans if you were to actually showcase more of what they did to people. Because... Of what we would end up seeing, this is this is the worst of it. Oh, yeah, no. Um, in terms of... Microwave inter cannon bombs. In terms of uh, pure raw violence, this is the strongest it ever got. The next closest, I, maybe? IBO is definitely a second. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like, limbs are full on loss in that show. And also a lot, also you see a, uh, the deaths of a lot of children. The bloody deaths of a lot of children. Yeah. Between the human... <laughs> wow, that was terrifying. <sighs> wait, wait, which fight is this? The one. Oh my god, we jumped right to the fight. This was like a couple yeah. of scuffles in. Yeah, the, uh, and it's also the dumb bullshit. This is where the meme is born. It's not impossible to also draw parallels between Athron 
uh, Athena and Kira to Naruto and Sasuke. Yes. It's absolutely there. You know, the funny thing is, I think this actually happened, even in Japanese, I think this happened before uh, Naruto and Sasuke had their fight. Yeah. Yeah, it really was. A couple of, by at least two or three years. You have the, so you have the edgy teenager, you have the, the predecessor to the edgy teenagers facing each other and yelling each other's names. Nico, no! He, he was wanted all, to learn piano! He was only 15. <laughs> it really says more about your army right than more so than the person you just killed. That means your army is taking on child soldiers, lol. That sounds like a you problem. <laughs> oh no, one of my friends died. <laughs> Even though we literally nuked a colony at the start of the show. Not nuked a colony, we killed an entire colony. See, you're supposed to sympathize with him because Nico was the cute one. Nico also had literally no personality. No. Literally the old, it's, it's, Fucking stupid, but it's also really, really funny how the only th okay, maybe I want to reiterate again. I watched the movie, so obviously I was getting a very abridged not version much of, of a, the story. There's not much of a difference in terms of characterization. Atherin is Atherin, uh, Izak is the jackass, Dirka is the stupid one. Yeah. Nicole is just there. Nicole, literally, the only semblance of personality we have for him is like literally at the last moment when he's dying. Um, after it has a momentary flashback of him and figuring out that oh he wants to learn piano that's it that's literally the beginning and the end of any sort of character for Nico it's that very much feels like a mistake they they made while writing the show and that, oh wait right we didn't show anything for him we have to write him off uh here he he want to learn piano or something wait no I'm sorry for a brief moment Dierka was also the flirt. Was and he? Who was he flirting with? Uh, the fucking one of the girls that ended up on the bridge, the uh, one with the uh, the one with the orange hair. Oh right, the one who actually helped him escape too, I think. Yeah. No, she was, she was always there. She was always on the archangel. Yeah. Uh, she was one of Kira's friends. Her boyfriend dies in one of the later battles. Right. And Dierka ends up being the one that killed him. Lol. And then, That's how it goes in this show. And then she ended up with him. And then she ended up with Dierka. Is that an NTR? I don't even know. Ye oh, NTR or acceptance? It, I can't really tell. Does it count if it's post-mortem? See, that's a question. Uh, Well, I mean, I watch play a hentai with Widow, so what the fuck do I know? <laughs> yeah. I don't think that works the same. <laughs> yeah, that's not quite the same qualification, but that's the closest I could possibly think of. Just the 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 milf tag, and that's it. <laughs> uh, we we'll get there. We will. You could argue almost there already. <sighs> Is that the end of the level, or do we have a thing with Atherin still? Oh yeah. Yes. By the way, yes. Dirka Atherin. looks looks almost one to one like Emmy uh, Archer Emmy from fucking Fate. That's definitely. Uh, that was also ahead of time. That is also one percent a coincidence because this came out well before the, the light novel, visual novel. Uh, Fate Stay Night the first time came out in two thousand four. Yeah, and then the, mo the anime series in two thousand six. Two thousand six. Damn, it only took two years. Two thousand six for the anime, and then two thousand eight for the dub. Yeah. Hey, was this news I hear about Tsukihime getting a remake or something? Apparently, the original visual novel is getting a remake. I wouldn't too much put too much stock into that. Yeah. Beyond being more than the real Tenua remakes of uh, Fate State Night and Fate Hollow Ataraxia, which is to say the same game with the same scripts just with all of the art replaced to resemble the Ufotable uh, character art. Yeah, or even like the PSP port of Fate State Night where it just had a Ufotable uh, intro and that's pretty much the extent of it. The Vita remakes, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it was a Vita remake, right now. Yeah. So yeah, I wouldn't put I wouldn't too much put too much stock in that. It's not exactly going to be like uh, the extra remake, which is actually running on a whole new engine. Yeah, which we just got a new trailer for that. For, uh, yeah, like two days ago. It's a trailer that's all about Tamamo. Well, <laughs> the hard mode of the fucking game. Good luck, boys. The only time she's ever likable is the first time. You can go ahead and say Tamamo is likable when she doesn't talk. I'll understand. 
Ugh. No, it's because she has the. I like Tama when she doesn't have competition. Yes. In Nero. Yes. When she's not being. When she's not playing. Possessive. When she's not being catty and playing off a rival, or torturing someone who did nothing to des to deserve it. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, are we gonna say it? Are we gonna say it? What the fuck? Oh no, we didn't say it. You killed <laughs> Nico. I, I was hoping we would say that he would just want to learn how to play piano. That doesn't happen in this scene. That happens when he's talking to Kagari. Yeah. <laughs> and they, okay. We'll explain that later. <laughs> That's no, it's gonna be. It'll be covered. That requires explanation. <laughs> the whole seat thing and the ice thing. <laughs> oh yeah, it's right in the justice. No, this isn't the justice gun. What the hell is this? Aegis gun. Yeah, it it can uh, turn into a crab claw, I guess. Fucking and Kira bye. survives this. They explain later that he ejected and his pod crashed into the side of a mountain. That's where a separate Zap detachment found him, um, uh, nursed him, and they were planning to interrogate and torture him for information about the Archangel. But Lacus freed him before they could do that and then sent him off in the freedom. You know kind of, what well, that kind of reached me as? Broly escaping New Planet Vegeta before the comet hit. Yeah. That yeah, real, basically. Like, it doesn't look like he should have possibly done it, but they still did it. Kira's got a bit of a rep in the, in the West for being Space Jesus. Yeah. And frankly, because of the fucking rampant plot armor he has, it's kind of very evident, yeah. <sighs> he survives that exact situation See, I'm not, twice. It's only a problem the second time in the uh, when the freedom gets blown to fuck. Mm -hmm. I don't mind it here because it's already known in general in Gundam that they have escape pods. They're just never used. The thing, though, is that the escape pod should have been covered by the claw thing. Uh, That's the issue. Like, it's never been shown that escape pods can escape out the back of a Gundam before. No, that's exactly how they work. They launch out the back. That's one of the things that I appreciate about uh, Code Geass is that they actually made, which came out right after Destiny, but, was that they uh, they made a point of saying how the escape pods are a core part of all of uh, the Nightmare Frames designs on purpose. So that's why they, uh, the Black Knights could lose so many battles in, in the early stages and not lose many people because, uh, because they were all set to escape. <laughs> okay. See, that's just the thing, though, and you see it itself, I know, a bad comparison. It, escape pods have only ever been to show to eject from the front side. There's never been an indication they can eject from the back. So that very much reads kind of more like an ass pool, but it's... I'm not totally pinned that shape for it, I just think it's really fucking funny. The same situation happens twice in a row. Also, Natalie's a bitch, but the movies don't show that, like, at all. That's one of the many things that gets cut. Yeah, no, it definitely gets more shown in, in, in this game proper, but still fairly hot. I, I, I'm not, I won't say that. Well, yeah. Say no. <laughs> By the way, I'm definitely going to say that uh, Gundam Seed is somehow MILF heaven. Also, uh, funny enough, both uh, both Natalie and Flay are voiced by the same woman in Japanese, who would later go on to play Stella. <laughs> uh, that's, that that's not weird. That seemed like a bad idea on the time at the time because Flay and Natalie share a lot of screen time together. Yeah, that's in Japanese, mind you, not in English. In English, that's something that's sort of common. Yeah, that's not a thing that happens in Japanese. Oh, we're Alaska. Oh, fun. When if we show it? <laughs> 